Good morning, gang. Happy Wednesday morning. Well, here we are the day after Super Tuesday. And not that we had any big surprises yesterday. Teeny ones, okay? Not that it's going to be anything making anybody shaking their boots. Joe Biden lost American Samoa. Ooh. Put out the panic wagon here real quick. Biden might be worried. Donald Trump lost Vermont to Nikki Haley. Ooh, put out the panic wagon in uh, the Trump campaign. I haven't seen a map like this since Reagan Mondale in 84. Okay. Yes, Nikki, it's time to leave. Officially. Okay. We all know you're through. But that's not the point. Okay. Just because Nikki's gone, we know, we've known forever this is going to be a Biden Trump rematch. But what's that going to mean? <clears throat> That's the scary part. <clears throat> so, we hear in God knows how many places about political violence. And I'm going to give you this. this. This is a scary thought in itself. Only 51% of the American public believes that whoever loses the 2024 election, the people, not the candidate, will take it gracefully. That means 49% of the American public, the way the question was asked, expect political violence after November 5th. Half. Okay? That's a scary thought. Now, we know what I talked about the other day about the FBI talking about this story on <clears throat> some Iranian assassin apparently is bound to, or is, I guess, expected to make some sort of attack on Trump administration personnel. Okay, that's kind of how they put it. Basically, you know what that means. That supposedly, they're, they're planting the seed that there's an, there's going to be an assassination of Trump uh, assassination attempt on Trump. Okay. Yeah, let's see how that one flies out. Well, on the flip side, you couldn't have the liberals let Trump get that kind of press because stuff like that will make people support a candidate. You know, hell no, you're not killing my candidate. So of course we had yesterday the reports come out about experts warning Joe Biden that MAGA extremists were going to make attempts on Joe Biden. Okay. A gentleman by the name of Dr. Peter Simi, who is a Chapman University professor, and his claim to fame is he studies extremism on the far right. Okay. Now give me this. Go figure. Chapman University is a private research college in California. Okay. Shouldn't have too many problems finding liberals there. Okay. But so where is this extremism going to come from? Sure, both sides are going to play up. They're, the other side's going to try to kill me. What, the lawfare didn't work there, Biden? So now you're going to try to use warfare as a benefit for your campaign to get the sympathy vote. Oh my God, they can't kill my president. No, nobody wants to kill your president, Joe. President, well, no, we want to kill your president, C. We don't want to kill you. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if the Grim Reaper came and got you before Christmas. Okay. But without the hand of anybody else. But I want to remind somebody, okay, violent crime, okay, as Peter Simi is talking about the mass shooting events and, you know, this is what to expect, that not only are they going to go against uh, the Biden administration and Biden himself, but they're going to go after lesser politicians, congressmen, senators, state representatives, governors, mayors. This is what he's saying, okay that at the local level, 
those politicians, those Democrats, are in danger from the unhinged right-wing mega extremists, right? Okay. Let me go into something here real quick. Factual studies by the FBI, okay, you know, the uber-liberal FBI under this administration, you know, who's more worried about arresting school board moms than they are about arresting terrorists and border crossers, you know, actual criminals, you know, drug dealers, that sort of stuff, you know, people that actually violate the law. The FBI has released a study that says, and I've talked about this before, of all the mass shootings in the United States in the 21st century, so at this point that's almost a quarter of the way done, 24, to the 24th year of it, 91% of the mass shootings in the United States are done by liberals. So if I look at the basic premise of what Dr. Simi is saying here about who is at risk of being assassinated, I wouldn't say Joe Biden is on the highest echelon of that list. Because considering nine out of ten shootings are done by liberals, unless the liberals plan on starting to kill their own politicians, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Okay. Let's take a look at something about the violence we can expect. Right? We all know about defund the police. We all know about these Soros-appointed DAs that are letting criminals loose. I mean, the, we talked about the Venezuelan guy in New York who beat the crap out of a cop killed a cop, and got released on a $1 bail. Murder, $1. I don't know. I could pull that out of my pocket. You probably can too. Okay. Gee, I'm out of jail. Killed a cop, but who cares? No, that's, you know, used to be that was pretty much go directly to jail, do not pass go, do not collect $200 and make your appointment with your, with your maker. Uh, because, you know, you you and a gurney have a soon meeting. Not anymore. Okay. So we know what the law is going to do to these criminals. They're just going to turn the other cheek and go, eh, it was a cop, who cares? You know, nah, it was a nursing student in Georgia, who cares, right? Ah, it was a military veteran who was exercising her First Amendment rights on the square at Washington, D.C. Who cares? Okay. That's pretty much the liberal thought. But so let's take a look. Like I said, 91% of the mass shootings in the United States, liberals. California Department of Justice, California, uber-liberal California, defund, defund the police, this sort of stuff, right? Okay. The California Department of Justice estimates that there are as many as 300,000 gang members in California. Hmm. You think they have a propensity for violence? Yeah. Do you think they're out in Simi Valley sipping Chardonnay? No. They're in the inner cities dealing drugs, and not worrying about the cops. Hmm. Who runs the cities again? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at Chicago, you know, that great Midwestern city where I was born. You know, <laughs> it ain't the city where I was born anymore. Okay. City of Chicago, their police department maintains two separate databases. <clears throat> Tracking gang members, Chicago, not all of Illinois, Chicago. The PD says there are 280,000 gang members in Chicago. There's 300 in all of California. There's 280 in Chicago. 
want to talk about a war zone. Oh, yeah, Chicago also happens to be where the Democratic National Convention is going to be this year. Hmm, anybody remember 1968? Think there's a chance that might happen again? Yeah, okay. Oh, but, you know, California, Chicago, you know. Well, let's take a look at my lovely state of Tennessee. We have Memphis. Lucky us, we have Memphis. Memphis is pretty much the opposite of everything else that is Tennessee. Crime is so bad in Memphis, Tennessee, that the mayor met with gang leaders. Stop and think about that for a second. Obviously, they know who they are. Hi, this is the mayor's office. Do you have an appointment on Tuesday for 10 o'clock? We'd let, The mayor would like to meet with you. Oh, let me see. Uh, nope, sorry. We don't have any drug deals or murders scheduled that time. Sure, I can come meet with you. Okay. The mayor of Memphis met with the gang leaders <clears throat> and asked them to agree to a seven-day ceasefire because crime is spiraling out of control in the city. A seven-day ceasefire sounds like something you'd hear in the Middle East. Not in Memphis, Tennessee. But is this waving the white flag? Please, we're begging you, don't kill our residents here for the next week. We, we need a break. Yeah, okay. Where do you think the violence is going to come from? Where do you think the violence already is? The cities are cesspools. You and I, who hopefully are out of the cities, have just what we have to wait for is these roving gangs of criminals to come out and say, well, we've sucked all the resources out of the city. It's now time to start moving out to the suburbs. Oh, we're already there because there's plenty of people in the burbs who like to buy our drugs. Oh, we need to move out into the rural areas. There's other drug dealers out there, but we're taking over their ter territory. This is it. You look at the criminal element in this country, the ones who are literally willing to kill you and think about which party they come from. You don't hear the stories about the huge gangs that are in Duluth, Minnesota. Okay. You hear the stories about the gangs in New York, the gangs in California, the gangs in Chicago, the gangs in Atlanta, the gangs in Boston, etc. etc. They all happen to be in blue areas. Why? Because the Democrats refuse to go after. We'll have a sit down with you. I mean, hey, I want to meet with all the gang gang members. Cool. They're all here. Guess what? Officers arrest every one of them, throw them in jail, throw away the key. There'd have been an idea. Okay. Yeah, the other guys might be pissed. They can go have a battle for who's going to take over and you just keep arresting them. The hell with arresting them. You know, you just start eliminating them. Okay. That's what needs to happen. And I know that's like, oh my God, you're going to start a war in the city. They've already got a war going on in the city. The problem is only one side's fighting. They're calling for assassinations. The, oh my God, Trump might get assassinated. Oh my God, Biden might get assassinated. Who's here working with the assassins, the killers, the known killers, and saying, hey, can you not do this, right? You know, because diplomacy works so well with organized crime. This is what you need to get ready for this summer. I told you guys a week ago, it's going to get bad. It's going to get worse. And wait till the elections, if we have them, okay? Half of this country, 49% of it, expects political violence. How many of those 49% plan on committing political violence? 
and that's why they expect it. Will we see Antifa, BLM, pick an organization, Chaz, Chop, all that sort of crap? Will we see them burn down cities again? Mm -hmm. Probably. Come November, come Christmas time, we're going to have another story about another Kyle Rittenhouse. Okay? Some guy that was defending his house, defending his business, or whatever it is, by some unruly mob. <clears throat> and he's going to solve the problem. And of course, he'll be the criminal, and the bad guys will be the victim. That's how effed up we are right now. I wish I had an answer, okay, where I don't I don't want to see a point in this country where we have to send the army, you know, the military out to patrol the streets. That's martial law, okay. But we may wind up in that situation just to get rid of the crime that the liberals are stoking and committing and encouraging left and right. We've talked about kidnappings out of grocery store parking lots, Walmart parking lots. You've seen all the stories about carjackings and everything. Those aren't your prim, polite neighbors that are, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to go steal somebody's baby today and sell it in the, the sex trade down in Mexico. No, these are the criminals. And nobody seems to be able to stop them. How they're going to get stopped, I have no idea. But all I can tell you this, what's what we're doing now ain't working. You know, it still amazes me why all these illegals come here. Sure, you got the cartels in Mexico who have no problem killing people. They're moving up here. They're, all these people are coming here not because... They have a great chance to go get a job picking strawberries. They're coming here because they have a great job waiting for them to become the next mercenary where they can go kill, rape, loot, murder, and take their riches that way. That is what's going on. They can talk about assassinations all they want. Nobody's going to assassinate Trump. Nobody's going to assassinate Biden. Okay. It practically impossible to get close to him okay, to do it. The security is unbelievable. But to get you and me, that's their goal. Because remember, they want to get the population of the earth down to about 5 million people. Who cares if everybody kills each other, right? We'll just sit in our ivory towers and watch. Well,